Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Angel here at the first championship on the Hopper Division. I'm here with 195 Cyber Knights, winners of the New England District Championship. They have an amazing robot this year. I'm gonna talk about their intake, their shooter, programming stuff, and a couple electrical stuff. But this is Angel here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, we're gonna pass it over to Seth who's gonna talk to us about their intake and shooter. Seth? Thank you. All right, so for our intake, if you wanna come around our side here. Uh, so our intake is a set of rollers that we got up front in here. So we have a front roller that's underneath our robot down here under our curved bumpers. It intakes our note. Uh, and then it passes up to what we call the uptake. So it's a set of about it's four rollers that will actually bring our note up into the shooter. So we, if uh, our drivers want to demonstrate here, as you can see, brings it right up into the shooter. Uh, there are a set of belts that guide the note along. Uh, all of our rollers are covered in uh, Shushi rollers from Andy Mark, uh, and it feeds directly into our shooter, uh, allowing us uh, very quick intakes and as well as outtakes. Um, and then based off that, it kind of just leads into our shooter, which I think I'll talk about next. Uh, so our shooter, uh, as you can see, is mounted on this big pivot arm uh, on our, the Spline XL shaft. So it can rotate about 270 degrees, give or take. Uh, with that, uh, obviously our note travels in here with these uh, rollers that intake it. Uh, we have a set of banner sensors that detect when our note is in our shooter. Uh, this allows us to detect when the note is and we'll change our LEDs to orange, letting our drivers know that there is a note in the shooter. Uh, obviously, we got our sets of wheels here, uh, shoot out um, our notes, and everything moves along so we can shoot uh, into the amp. It shoots out the back. We can shoot up and over as what we call a defense shot, or we can um, just obviously just shoot the normal to a speaker. Um, so here's our amp position. As you can see, it would shoot out the back like that. Uh, obviously, we have other positions as well. Uh, and this also we uh, can intake from the source by putting our shooter vertical. Um, well, obviously clean, efficient shooter and intake. What was the uh, the reasoning going with the pivoting intake and having it pass from the uh, behind the bumper intake? Yeah, so um, we went through a redesign, as ma many may know. So we to noticed what other teams were doing and we realized that this is a very good idea based off our teams we were seeing. Uh, so then we obviously put our own spin on it, refined it, and it's very, very quick and efficient. Um, it allows us to shoot virtually from anywhere. Uh, it's super powerful. Uh, it's very versatile as well. Um, and it's just overall very, very good, efficient design. Well, obviously an amazing, efficient design. Can't wait to see what you'll do with that. But let's get over to Uptez, who's gonna talk about the climber. Hi, so um, coming up to our climber, um, it's kind of like a, a Andy Mark climber in the box, but a little bit modified. Um, as you can see in the back over here, um, it's mounted on using a custom made 3 print out of Onyx. Um, it rests on the spline shaft of the shooter um, using using these bushings, it's able to freely rotate and it's attached using a 7075 um, aluminum plate that's quarter inch and uh, allowing for extra rigidity. Um, so essentially the climber is spooled up in the back. Um, it has a 20 to 1 gear ratio allowing us to hold up our robot. And one really cool thing about it, about it is that we have a servo actuated ratchet brake. So if you guys can show off how the climber works. So with the servo, it's able to stay up um, even when our work is in. And then we have some really cool rainbow LED lights to signify that we climb. So uh, how fast can you climb? Um, our climb is it's pretty quick. Um, we have to go into the center and then move to the side and then over into climb. So it's normally could like be around three seconds. Well, very interesting and very effective climber. Let's move over to Casey, who's going to talk to us about their electrical stuff that's going on here. Okay, so for our electrical, one unique thing that we recently changed about our robot is our batteries. So we had a lot of thermal issues going into our um, match in Waterbury and even Waterbury. 
Waterbury in Western New England. And so we changed the wire into zero gauge wire to help with the thermal issues. And then along with this, we also moved into having a PDP instead of the PDHs because we researched and found out that the PDPs hold more amps for our power because we use Krakens and Falcons and they draw a lot of power for our robot, all of the different pivoting directions. Very interesting. So let's move over to Belinda, who's gonna to talk to us about our software. So for our software, we use something called the Jetson. So the Jetson is a co-processor to the Robo Rio and it runs about 40 times faster. So the enable signal is run on the Robo Rio and then everything else is run on the Jetson. Um, we also use something called ROS2, so that's the framework for our program. It stands for Robot Operating System. Um, so the way it works is that each subsystem of the robot, like the shooter and the climber, is each separated into different nodes, and these nodes send messages back and forth to one another, so that if one thing on the robot breaks, the entire thing doesn't fail. And then in terms of our autos, we use something called the Path Cobbler, which we created. Um, it's basically an image of the field where you can plot points to create a path for our autos and it's compatible with the 3D model of the field, which we also created, our simulation, um, so we can test our autos without actually having access to the robot. So these are just the controls for our, our robot. Um, this one is the intake. We have the log, we'll talk about this a little bit, um, the amp source. They're all just automatically aiming. Well, very interesting on the software side and very interesting to see a Jetson being used as they haven't been used in a while. So. 195 Cyber Knights here on the Hopper Division. Can't wait to see what y'all do and best of luck to you here at the first championship. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.